So let's talk about why the world may be facing an overpopulation problem. First, we need to look at Thomas Malthus. He was an economist from the United Kingdom and he lived in the 1700s through the uh, 1800s. And uh, he wrote a, an, an essay called uh, an essay on the principle of population in 1798. And he's important to understand in the field of geography because he's one of the first people to really make a prediction about the world being overpopulated. So let's look into what Malthus actually believed. Malthus predicted in 1798 that uh, the population, and he was specifically speaking about England at the time, would increase geometrically, meaning that you have one person in the beginning, at the present day for an example, they would have two kids. Then those two kids would also have two kids. And then those kids would also have two kids. And so you're, you're increasing population very quickly as you go through the years. Remember. These are just examples. This is not really, truly, uh, can't be extrapolated to real life, but you need to understand this is just an example. So he believed that people increased geometrically. The population would increase geometrically. While at the same time, food would increase arithmetically, meaning that for every one person, you have one unit of food. Two people, two units of food. And you have four people, and here's where it changes and a problem develops, according to Malthus. That food only increases by one while the population doubles. The population doubles again to eight, but food only increases to four. Then you have 16 people and only five units of food. So that's why he believed that eventually, within 100 years, people would outgain food by a large margin. And that's a big problem, obviously, because people like to eat. Uh, what you need to also take into account is that the United Kingdom had just entered stage two of the demographic transition model in 1798. So you have to understand that Malthus saw a huge population explosion around him due to the Industrial Revolution. <clears throat> so now we're going to look at what are called Neo-Malthusian beliefs. Anytime you see the word Neo attached to anything, that means it's new or contemporary beliefs. So, there are two main things uh, that Neo-Malthusians believe. One is that populations in LDCs grow exponentially large now because they have better medical technologies that were given to them by the more developed countries that are in stage three, four uh, of the DTM, such as the United States and Western Europe. So, you have cheap medical uh, technologies that are in these LDCs now. But at the same time, you don't have the increase of wealth to sustain those populations. So the result of this is you have a high CBR, but a low CDR. And so when that happens, obviously, we have a net increase in the population and the NIR, the natural increase rate, increases. Secondly, is that population is growing faster than energy, farmland, and fuel. So Neo-Malthusians agree that the food issue isn't as big of a problem, but that other resources such as gasoline, farmland, clean air, clean water, that those cannot keep pace with the population increase. So therefore, the Neo-Malthusian belief, the result of this is that eventually there will be wars and civil violence uh, for these resources such as uh, land, fuel, uh, and water. And that's a pretty big problem because people don't like war. Uh, so if you buy into this, it sounds like a pretty dire prediction uh, for the world. Now, let's get into the critics of Malthus. Also known as, why will all be okay? Maybe. Uh, first, the, one of the main criticisms of the Malthusian system or belief predictions is that uh, is that he believes that resources are fixed, uh, meaning that there is only a certain amount of food and that people can't produce uh, more than what's already there. But we know that resources, especially food, aren't fixed and that people can innovate and improve ideas in order to improve things like the food supply, uh, the water supply, 
alternative and cleaner fuels. So that's the first main criticism here. And that goes back to possibilism, like we talked about before, uh, that people can adapt to their environment and adapt to their situations uh, despite dire predictions or despite a harsh environment. The second criticism of uh, Malthus is that, uh, or it's not necessarily a criticism, but it's, it's more a different spin on what a population can do. Malthus believed that more people equals more drain on a resource. Uh, however, the critics of Malthus say that more people equals more brains. Uh, which is good for zombies, because zombies love brains. Uh, but in our world, uh, more people leading to more brains means simply that there are more uh, consumers for the economy, there are more producers in the economy, meaning that you have more labor to create food, and you have more innovators. Uh, you have more intelligent people that can uh, really bring better ways of doing things to the world. So. Uh, the critics of Malthus really believe that the population growth of the world isn't necessarily a totally bad thing. <clears throat> so now, Malthus, is this real life? No! No, it's not real life. And this is why. From 1950 to the present, the world has had the highest natural increase rate in history. We've had the highest population growth in history as a planet since 1950. However, food has outpaced the natural increase rate, meaning that we have more food as a planet than people. Uh, and finally, the population did not grow at Malthus's predicted rate. Malthus believed that the population would quadruple uh, within 100 years, but even in the fastest growing countries like India, the population has not kept up with that pace. Now, you may ask yourself, uh, well, why are there so many uh, poor people that don't have food? That's not because we can't grow enough food as a planet, that's because poor and hungry people don't have access to the food for economic, political, and social reasons. So it's not because we're not capable of producing enough food for the planet, but it's that those people can't get that food for other reasons. Uh, so finally, we're going to look at declining CBRs. How do you decrease the birth rate? Because first we talked about overpopulation and why it can be a bad thing. And in many LDCs, they struggle with this because they have a very high birth rate. So there's two ways to reduce your CBR in your country. One is to improve your economy. Uh, this, when you improve economic conditions, you can have more money to educate women, most specifically. Uh, when women become better educated, they can often take a more prominent role in the workforce. They have a choice in what they can do. They don't just have to stay at home and, and raise children. Uh, and when women are educated and they are given that choice, oftentimes they will choose uh, to have a job and not necessarily have a bunch of kids. Uh, the problem with this is that it takes time. This is a very slow process. You're not, it takes decades for something like this to happen. And a lot of countries aren't super patient about that. So the second way to decrease your CBR is to increase the use of contraception or birth control. Uh, and so birth control is extremely cheap. It's the cheapest it's ever been in the history of mankind. Uh, it's very easy to distribute to people. Uh, you can give away birth control. A lot of times uh, charities will go in and just distribute condoms or distribute uh, birth control pills to women uh, after they've had consultations, of course, with doctors. Um, the, the, so that's the good thing about it. Uh, but there's, there's always a but to these things, and the but here is that there are economic and social barriers, uh, such as, uh, you know, people may be so far out uh, in a rural area that they don't have access to the free birth control, or there may be religious, political, or economic, uh, basically, restrictions to, uh, to using birth control.